Hey everybody, I'm Robert. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Today we have a special guest straight out of the foxhole. <laughs> Hi, I'm Misha. <laughs> Good being here on your channel, finally. Finally. Oh, he, he, was, he was with me in Italy when we did the M4 I like big grills and I cannot live it. Correct. And this particular video, we tried to shoot like six times. I by think now. we shot this six times. The last one, he was lit. We we had to we had to we had to cancel True. it. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it was like the follow up to four summits, and it was one bottle, and it just everything went downhill. True. It ended up being forty five minutes of really good laughs, but, yeah. but it it, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it wasn't ready for the YouTube. We couldn't consciously click the button that says this video is appropriate. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the, the goal of today's video is actually to talk about Apex, uh, and, and not just Apex in the form it is today, but how did we get here? And, and more importantly, how did Misha and I meet? How did we decide that Apex was going to be something that we should do? Where did we come up with this nonsense idea? And, <laughs> and, and really, what's, what's the reasoning behind it personally for each of us? And I'll let Misha maybe start it off by uh, telling the story of how, maybe how we met and how we came across each other. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it started all back in 2016, 16, and yeah. end of 16. Uh, I was back at the time, or was already my second year here at the Nürburgring. I was working at a company that was providing similar type of services as Apex does. And you messaged that company's account in German saying like, hey, I would like to store a car if you offer some storage. I'm like, in my broken German, Google Translate, well, yeah, sure, come over. So he comes over to the office, starts talking, speaking German to me. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, hi. So yeah, okay, we can store. And like, where are you from? I sent some accents. Well, American. Like, can we speak English, please? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Robert stored his uh, 488. Back I, then. I stored my 488 and the 675 LT oh, yeah, there. Both cars. And and in fact, if you guys go to the Boosted Boris channel, you yeah. you'll see him doing some review of of the car car news at the time exactly sitting sitting in front of the, the back of the 48 gtb which was one of my first exposure to his youtube channel i hadn't <laughs> seen it before and i just had to laugh he said is it okay if i make a video with the ferrari i said yeah no no problem and i saw it i was like oh okay yeah. <laughs> i sat in front of his license plate i said oh i sat in front of your license plate so just to hide it away like i don't care about it like well some people do so uh afterwards we had a small photo shoot with the 675 lt yeah uh, you and daniel actually yes. set it up and it, really cool water shots and different yeah. things like that it was actually pretty neat and uh yeah, it was it was neat to see. Okay, the car is getting used. Misha was having fun with them and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And the reason I went there was was because I was tired. I didn't have a, a property here at the Nurburgring, and I was tired of driving the cars back and forth. One thing I always say is that I like using the cars on the track. I'm not such a big fan of just driving them on the road just for fun. And I brought two cars up for a weekend and would drive two cars back. And so collectively, you're you're talking. Eight, 750 kilometers mm -hmm. collectively between the two cars just to go to the Nürburgring. And sometimes you just want to sit in the car with your family and drive home. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave them. So yeah, I ended up leaving them with Misha and yeah. that was how we met. That's how we met. And then the winter came because it was already end of the year, last summer, yeah. October. Right. Winter came and then eventually like somewhere in November, December, we started talking. Yeah. I mean, I, I had bought a property in mm -hmm. Nürburgring and I didn't know exactly what it was going to be for. There were other options, other things to do businesses that were forming at the time and the visions that I potentially had for this property and, and the other options didn't really line up. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I knew that I needed to buy this property based on its location. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny because it sat for a long time and so many people were scared of it. If this property was sitting now in 2021 for sale at the Nürburgring like mm -hmm. this, people would be fighting over it. Yeah. People would have been literally clawing at each other to get the opportunity to buy it. Exactly. And I think also, especially after seeing what we were able to do here. Yeah, because uh, many people it. like in 2017, especially because we were able to turn the place around, yeah. like from we started construction in January in May, yeah. 24 hour race we was available. Yeah. And then, well, of course the barn was finished later yeah. in the year, but people were coming by here like, oh my God, I was looking at, at this and I was, it's never gonna work. All asbestos here is just, it was a it's a money pit. It's so, so, so I said, okay, we need it. I need to buy this mm -hmm. one way or the other. I have to buy it. So I did. And like I said, there were many options on the table. And as I'm seeing these options not really suiting what I want to do, I just wrote Misha. I said, Misha, I've got this property in the middle mm -hmm. of Nurburg. You've got this great boosted Boris channel. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like to do something together? You seem motivated. You, you, I, I've, you've always been professional with me. And one thing I'll tell you that I saw about Misha is if I called him at 10 o'clock at night and said, I want to bring the Ferrari back, no problem, come by. Mm -hmm. If I called him at eight in the morning and said, I want to pick the Ferrari up, no problem, come by. And that was the type of customer service that I saw and said, you know what, I, this, this would be something I can work with. And I found mm -hmm. that to be very 
exciting for me knowing that I'm not at the Nurburgring. Mm. I'm not located at the Nurburgring permanently. A lot of people think that this is what I do every day, play with cars. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't even want to say I, I wish I did because I really love my jobs, if you would. I love what I do in real estate and investment and things like that. It really is my passion and this is a way for me to enjoy my hobby. And so Misha's all, all constant enthusiasm was something I said, hey, this is, this is for me very positive. His outgoing nature, the way that he always spoke with the customers and had fun with it was a sure sign that this was something I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. So WhatsApp messages, you know, all hours, talking calls, and planning. WhatsApp calls. Yeah, and then... you were in Russia at the time. Yes. Yeah, Misha was in Russia at the time and, and we were looking at all the different options and ideas and finally, we, we spent, we finally nailed down, okay, we want to do car rental, instruction, and hotel. Mm -hmm. Those were the three services we wanted to provide mm -hmm. because that's the core. You want to come to the Nürburgring and drive, you know, yeah. and, and that really brought people to the Nürburgring and we started brainstorming names. Yeah, we started brainstorming names. One of the first names was Club Pole Position. Pol pole Position, and he wanted that just for his... You yeah, know. because uh, during the day you can have like pole position related to racing and then in the evening you have pole position with girls and... I promptly shut that down. Yeah, you said as long as my wife doesn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's later signed me up for Tinder, so you guys know. That's true. Uh, another story for another time for tier one people. Uh, but uh, another thing that I want to mention is like, of course, we had the talks about the name. But before that, when we were talking about what we we're going to do exactly, yeah, one, one of the questions from your side as like more or less typical job interview question, where do you see not yourself in five years or where do you see Apex evolving in yeah, the future? Yeah. And I said, you know, I cannot pinpoint, pinpoint if we're going to have five cars, 20 cars, if we're going to have like multiple uh, locations all over the world and spy and everything. But I want to make that place without a name at that time. I want to make that place that we're going to make together iconic as, for example, Piston Klause. Piston Klause is a restaurant here just across the street that is famous for its steak on stone. You can like or dislike their kitchen, but you cannot deny the fact that they are the most iconic place. Yeah, they're a central comes. place at, yeah. at the racetrack. People absolutely. say like whenever you go to Never Cream, people are going to say like, oh, I've been there. You definitely need to go eat steak on stone. Like, OK, cool. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to achieve with Apex is whenever someone comes to the Never Cream, they're going to say like, hey, you need to go to Apex. You need to do whatever type of service they're going to be providing at the time. And I think we're OK on the way. I yeah. think and I, and I think the same thing. I want Apex to be a place. Uh, and, and this, this ties in also to what I was saying with the name. Mm -hmm. Part of the name was it had to be professional. Yes. It had to be central. It had to show, it didn't, I, I didn't want the name ringing it. Ring. We didn't want yeah. the name ringing it. We wanted it to be something that was just a one word apex. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's something that I think is neat. Are you, you know, I'm going to apex. Yeah, it's apex Nurburg. That's, that's yeah, it's apex thing. taxi. Yeah, it's, it's, apex it's a neat media. thing that we've added to it, but apex is apex. Yes. Right. And, and so I think that that the whole idea of Apex is exactly that. The name ties in with the concept that, that we really want it to be that you know if you want to come down and see these cars in the barn. Mm -hmm. You know if you want to see cool cars around a property, this is where you go. If you want to just come and hang out and park up and, and just see what's going on, it's a place to go. You don't have to come here to spend money mm -hmm. because we have car spotters that come, they're welcome. We have people that are just daydreaming that come, they're welcome. Someone wrote me the other day and said, I can't believe that Robert, you're getting ready to take the GT2 RS out for a lap, and I pulled up in my 500 pound Micra, and I stopped you, and you got out of the car and started talking to me about wheel discs, what the wheel discs mean, and I think he said something like, one of those wheel discs costs more than my entire car, mm. but you still took the time to talk to me. And that's what it should be. Yeah. I don't want anybody to ever be amazed that anybody from Apex took the time to talk to them, because the whole concept that I have mm -hmm. is how you say you want to be a central point, it's exactly that but also a central point where everybody's welcomed mm -hmm. and everybody can go and know they're going to be able to have a good time. Yeah. And that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. So we have gone from origination to creating a name and, 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 and developing a friendship between Misha and I that has gone, you know, literally through developing, building the hotel, Misha and Diana starting out in an office <laughs> over at Atomic yeah. when they were on, uh, uh, over in the industry park. Uh, working out because this wasn't finished yet all the way through developing quite a large team operating rental cars hotel instruction as planned but also getting a taxi license mm -hmm. and running what I think and I think a lot of people feel might be one of the most exciting taxi operations that the Nürburgring has seen I will never say that we competed 
with the old school BMW M5s that were drifting around and creating excitement. <laughs> Back in I, the days when it was all allowed. I will respect that. Yes. As long as, you know, as taxis are around, I will say they, they, they take a highlight. And I wish that we had the ability to go drift the track and be crazy for you guys mm -hmm. from a safety standpoint, a liability standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible anymore. Um, a brand that's sitting behind it uh, in the 80s and 90s could do crazy things, early yeah. 90s. A brand or anyone sitting behind it in 2020, 21 can't, unfortunately. Yeah. But it really it really is a, a proud moment for me to say that we really did, over, over three years, create a fantastic taxi program, exciting rental cars in a place where I think people are welcome. Yeah. I think that was indeed uh, one of our top goals to, of course, to provide the best possible service to be the central hub mm -hmm. and also be welcoming to people. And uh, that's what it's all about. That's for us sharing the love with, that's exactly yeah, for the Nürburgring, for the cars, right. with people. And you cannot put a price on it. No, you can't. You can't. Now, I have a question because I think this is an interesting one. We've, we've spoke about how we developed it, what our goals were. I think we're on our way to our goals. Mm -hmm. I think... I'm always uh, positive. I'm a very positive person, but I'm also always, I, I don't want to say insecure, but I look at things in a manner where I say, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We need to do better. Misha will hear me all the time say, I, I don't know. I don't know if we, I don't know if we're communicating with people. I don't know if they, if they, if, if they are getting where we're coming from. And, and Misha's like, yeah, I think they do. And I'm like, I don't know. I think we need to do better, you know, <laughs> but where, where do you see it going? What would you like to see out of the next four or five years? Pooh. I mean, I would say that the first four years, definitely the first two uh, years, especially after we got the taxi license, we became victims of our own success. Yeah, without a doubt. It was like the first year was great. Oh yeah, at Atomic, we have two cars, they yep. can rent them or we have a hotel. It was fun, it was it relaxing. Was, it was yeah. fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Then the second year, we had to instantly just double or triple the size right. of our operations, right. but just by running taxi operations from different locations. We're running from taxi car park. From here, we had to get all the extra people and eventually you, you spend more time actually managing people than managing your business. Right. And by doing these two things, you have zero time left to actually dedicate your time to people who come over to, uh, well, to us, to, to talk to us. Right. And then you start getting uh, comments, uh, justified comments saying like, oh, you, well, I visited Apex, service was absolutely great, but you looked a bit grumpy or you, like, you look like, tired. You yeah. look tired, it seems that you're not enjoying your job or you didn't like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I felt maybe in a way like I didn't want to talk to you because I was getting this kind of certain vibe. And we kind of started move, like rectifying this, I think, last year. Of course, it's well, because thing, of... A big, thing that, a big thing that changed that is that when, when Apex grew and we take in the taxis, it was a lot of work. Yes. And the season is very long. We have 12, 14, 15 hour days. 12 is actually light. It's 14, light. 15 yeah. hour days to get the cars through a weekend, four day weekends with, with literally the track being open for 12 hours mm -hmm. a, a day. And what ends up happening is the team gets tired. Yes. And so we, our, our, our ability to have customers coming and our request from customers grew so fast that the team we were all stretched. Yeah, I was coming up to drive taxi and help and, and do all these things. I was working in the office. Uh, Misha and Diana would take time off and, and I'd be working in the office with Tom. <laughs> We'd be doing rental cars and stuff just to try and get the team a break. And it was a lot. And so that's when we were able to really start growing the team. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard when you, when you don't know, when you're starting a new program, you're starting new things. Is this just this weekend that's busy? Is it just mm -hmm. this month that's busy? And so we started growing the team and we've finally developed into a method that has the team with good days off, with uh, shifts, a morning shift, afternoon shift, and things like that, and that finally has helped. And I hope the customers are also saying, "Oh man, this is really cool," you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, to, to to continue with answering your question, I think we should continue with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we made the clear decision last year and the year before that that we don't want to expand our rental fleet right. because in the beginning we were growing. We, we had to, we started probably with five cars eventually 2018 19 we were going towards 13 cars yeah, maybe absolutely scaled it down to 10 yep and uh, that seemed to be the perfect formula yeah i think 10 11 is where we want to stay at yes we have the ability to go to more but we want to keep this customer orientation we don't want everyone to just come through as a number mm -hmm. and even at 10 it's a lot it is a lot yeah. it is a lot uh, but at this at this rate and especially also having just only five hotel rooms we can know in the who is Who's staying in the with us yeah, who is exactly. there 
Uh, we are now have improved our reception area in 2020 yep. because first we had the small room uh, over there, which is yeah. now your My media office. office. Yep. Exactly. Um, so we can receive people in uh, like a more uh, open, welcome environment, and and that's... they can see what's going on here. Exactly, they can really see cool. what's happening here, um, and I think that's what we should well yeah. maintain and uh, go towards. Try not to outgrow ourselves in terms of the product or services that we want to offer. We always need to. Well, to, to try to achieve the best possible service and have the best possible product, but not to try to like, okay, we're going to have 50 GD2 right. RSs because... Uh, no, I think, I think it's not necessary. For me, I'm in the same boat. My goal uh, from the beginning uh, was always, and I, I, I'd said this many times we were talking, I want people to have fun at Apex. Yes. I want people to come and I want them to have fun with us and, and to really enjoy the Nürburgring because of what we're able to provide. Mm -hmm. And I want that to continue, but I want it to continue in this format as well. Yep. And, and this is a really important format to me is that uh, the world through social media has gotten a lot smaller, mm -hmm. yet it still remains very big outside of social media. Yeah. So we've got, a lot, we've got thousands and thousands of people that can watch these, these channels and not actually get to the Nürburgring. So I want to make sure that Apex becomes the central hub to get that information of what is it like at the Nürburgring. Mm -hmm. What is it like with these cars? Mm -hmm. What is it... And not just from our perspective, but what about the customers that come and experience it? Mm -hmm. Do you guys want, after you do your lap, do you want to talk for a minute and say, my gosh, my emotions, you know, uh, I've had people that, that got back from a lap and said, I actually started crying yeah, on yeah, my first we, lap. Yeah, we had the question. And these are the Jimmy things... Broadband cried in RM2. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. And these are the things that I want to share is that this is people's bucket list mm -hmm. and they go out and they're like, I've been dreaming of this for 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. years. You know? But also, on the other hand, you have people who never had anything with the Nürburgring. Yeah. Also, myself, when I started, before I came in 2015, I was like, oh, Nürburgring cave. Mm -hmm. It was pretty easy to get here. I was only living one and a half hour away, but it would never attracted me. But anyhow, here we are. We have people who back in 2017, when we started doing vlogs and social media messaging, I was like, oh my God, this looks so awesome. I need to get there, but I'm currently either a student yep. or I just don't have the financial They started means. saving money. I, I'm going to come over in, in 2019. <laughs> I'm like, ambitious, okay, in two years time. I mean, like, and they, cool. They have. And they showed up. They have, yep. They showed up. We have people every year coming say like, hey, we've been following you since like the last three, four, we, five we've years. We've had people call and say, we want to give you 10 bucks a month. And you save it so that when I have enough money to come, I can come. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really cool to see the drive that people have. And when those people contact us, that's when we also reach out and do what we can to, to help and, and be a part of it. And I think that's something else that I would like Apex to continue doing is mm -hmm. those that can't. Yeah. I want to see I want to see people come out and come to the Nürburgring. It's one of the things we're doing with the grape flap giveaway, hotel stay, mm -hmm. plus laps with, with us around the Nürburgring on bikes, on e-bikes. And the intent is for people that maybe can't afford an e-bike, maybe can't afford a trip to the Nürburgring mm -hmm. to be able to experience that because I think it really is a magical place. Mm -hmm. The Green Hill is somewhere that, that I've now at about 6,000 laps, I'm not tired of it. No. And I don't have a very long attention span. <laughs> I do get tired of things uh, really, relatively quickly, but the Nürburgring keeps my attention. It's the entire atmosphere of the place and that's what I want to share with everybody. Yeah. So, guys... That's mine and Misha's take. Why we why we came together, came with with a concept of Apex, and why we've done it and stuck together through it. It's not something that's easy to get away from. No, I've said it many times <laughs> before. You know, in business, you can build a brand. I just did a, a video about Ferrari, and I, I was talking about how Ferrari is the world's most valuable brand. It's not the world's most valuable company, mm -hmm. but it's the world's most valuable brand. And I would love to see. Apex become the Nurburgring's most valuable brand. We got a lot of work to catch Manti Racing, I think. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but in, in a whole, I want our emotion to be able to be portrayed to the customer. And I, I thank you for, for being a part of that and helping us do that. And, you know, Misha's done thousands of videos at the Nurburgring sharing that on behalf of Apex and himself. And uh, I think it's hopefully something that you guys have been able to appreciate, something you guys have been able to enjoy. And I think I speak on both of our behalf that we're really eager to continue doing that for years to come. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. Have a great night and we'll catch you later.